Hello everybody, this is Adam for RealHomeRecording.com. Unfortunately, because of the type of tutorial that this is, I can't screen capture like usual. Otherwise, it's going to really mess things up. So I'm using my video camera to record my computer monitor. Deal with it. Okay, so during Friday's video, the video about the very important Reaper setting for MIDI and guitar amp modeling recordings, I discovered a very big thing that affects anybody who has a USB audio interface and probably other different types of interfaces as well, but mainly USB because the issue we run into with USB interfaces is the latency issues. Unless you're lucky enough to own an RME interface, you deal with some pretty high latencies. Now, you know, for normal computing, it's not an issue, but when you're trying to play, say, a virtual instrument, it's an issue. Well, this is probably the biggest discovery I have ever made in, well, I'm sorry, that I've made in 2017, okay? And that is thanks to a subscriber, and unfortunately, I don't remember who recommended this to me, but they recommended it to me so that I could record ASIO during screen captures, and it's a program called Voice Meter, okay? So this program right here is mainly intended so you can use ASIO during normal computer stuff, but I discovered on Friday that it is a lower latency for recording purposes. Now, I don't recommend using this for normal recordings where you don't need low latency. So anything that's not a virtual instrument, then don't even worry about using it. Use your audio interface drivers because this isn't 100% stable. I'm gonna warn you guys about that. However, if you are recording virtual instruments, MIDI, possibly guitar amp modeling too, but mainly MIDI because I know that the audio quality is not affected by using this program then I recommend using it because the numbers don't lie. Look at those numbers from a previous screen capture. That is my Audi and ID14 at different sample rates versus using the same interface, the Audi and ID14 through voice meter. Holy crap, those are RME type numbers. And I noticed it right away. I was like, wow, like when I press the key on the keyboard down, it actually activated the sound right away, which is not the case when normally using the audio interface, even at 96 kilohertz at 128 samples, which is the minimum the Audi 9014 can do on Windows. I know it's slightly lower on Mac, but let me tell you guys something. This is crazy. So let me show you how to set it up. So I'm going to close out for now. First of all, you're going to right click on the speaker icon on the bottom right corner of your screen. Hopefully you can see that. Again, I can't zoom in like a normal screen capture, unfortunately. So I'm gonna right click that and choose playback device. And then right here, I'm going to change my output, which right now is on the Audi 9014. I'm gonna change that to voice meter. I scroll down to see it. So I'm gonna click that and then hit set default. All right. And then I'm gonna to go to the recording tab and change this from the audience to voice meter output. And then I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna double click the, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back to playback, double click this, and then make sure on the advanced tab, it's set to 24 bit 44.1. If you're on Windows 8 or Windows 10, sorry, I cannot help you. Uh, figure these settings out yourself, all right? So, now that that's set up, the next important step is to actually open voice meter up and then you're going to adjust uh, the hardware input. I'm going to set it to, on mine, it is set up to A1 ASIO input one plus two. And then number two is set to A1 ASO input three plus four. And I get the snag screen because I haven't donated yet, but I will be donating after this video because let me tell you, man, this is a super useful feature and these guys deserve money, all right? So by the way, I'm using version 1.0.5.3. I know that they have a new version uh, 5.4 out, 
that I haven't downloaded yet. So if this doesn't work, that's why. So try to get the version I'm using. Anyway, the other important step is under the menu option right here in the upper right corner, you want to set your system settings slash options to preferred main sample rate and then set it, in my case, I'm gonna do 90,000 hertz because that is the lowest latency. But interestingly enough, 44.1 works pretty darn well as well. So I'll just leave it at 441 for now. You have to minimize it. Do not close this window because without this program being open, the rest of this doesn't work. You can't even hear audio out of your speakers otherwise. So the other setting that you may need to change is over here where it says hardware out. Mine is set to ASIO Audient USB Audio ASIO Driver. And now I'm going to minimize this and open Reaper up. So, and I'm going to open up Audience Driver as well. Or rather, the control panel software for Audient. And what I'm going to do is double check my settings. I want to make sure my buffer is on 128 since that's what I'm going to flip it to. And what I'm going to do now is go to Options preferences, and then under audio device, I'm going to find audio system and change that to ASIO. And then under ASIO driver, I'm going to change that to voice meter, virtual ASIO. And then I'm going to put my request sample rate. Since this is already filled in, I'm going to put it to 96,000 Hertz. And then the request block size, check that and make it 128. And then I'm going to hit ASIO. Actually, that doesn't work. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. ASIO configuration will open this up. And at this point, I'm going to change my sample rate in Audient to 96 kilohertz. And just to double check, uh, it didn't change yet. It, it, should, it will change though once I hit this. So I hit OK. And then I'm going to change my project settings under Reaper to 96,000. Hertz, and it still didn't change. For, oh, that's right. I, I just remember why. This is actually good that I made this mistake. So, oh, my computer's delaying itself. Okay, so this is what I forgot to do. Under menu, in voice meter, go to system settings slash options, and then down here where it says preferred main sample rate, change it to 96. Remember I said it, I'm gonna do 441, but then I changed my mind. Okay, so 96,000 Hertz, and then that will actually change the audience to 96,000 uh, automatically. Okay, so now I can hit X and minimize voice meter and then open Reaper back up. And now if you look up here, it says 96K, 96 kilohertz, Make sure my project is 96 as well. And then at this point, I can test my latency. You know what? I don't have my MIDI stuff plugged in, so I can't. But that's how you do it. You got to make sure every time you want to do this under Reaper preferences or whatever your doll is. You know, your doll is going to be different from mine, but I like Reaper because I can choose these different options that other dolls may not have. So all this stuff... 128, and, and by the way, if you do use another DAW and want to have this capability, you know, Reaper is an option just to record MIDI. You can always put the MIDI files in your DAW of choice. Uh, Reaper's great for just recording if you want this capability. Uh, but yeah, so you just make sure that voice meter is set and then enable inputs is checked. And then your first option is going to be VM. VAIO1 and then last is VMVAIO2 and then the more important setting is the output range which is VMVAIO1 and then last is for me is VAIO4 and this correlates to this setting right here um, I believe you can change it in these settings as well but this refers to the hardware output in this setting right here. And I think that's about it for now. Yeah, so that's it guys. Like I said, the numbers don't lie. I'll put them back on screen. You know, Audient 
96 kilohertz at 128 samples gives me about 6 milliseconds of round trip latency. On the same interface, but using the voice meter drivers, I get less than 2 milliseconds. Again, voice meter, if you, if you keep clicking the measure button in the um, real-time latency measurement, that'll keep changing. Audience is stable, it doesn't change, but it's always under 2 milliseconds, which is incredible. Like I said, it, it's the difference between hitting the key and the sound slightly comes behind it versus hitting the key and you hear it right away. Yeah, 1.35 millisecond round trip latency is nothing to sneeze at. So guys, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, share it. This is huge information. Like I said, I would never have tried doing this if it weren't for that video last week. And this is huge. This changes everything for me when it comes to MIDI recording. Uh, you know, the audience having okay real-time latency, but nothing compared to like an RME interface. This makes the interface a lot more valuable, and I'm sure it works on other interfaces, not just audience, but man, just the fact that I can have a low latency like this, an ultra-low latency, is huge. Huge, huge, huge. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any new videos. And again, if you haven't liked the video yet, hit that thumbs up button. See ya.